Will the results of Iowa and then New Hampshire make a difference or not? After almost a year of essentially nonstop campaigning, actual voting is taking place, of course, in Iowa, and then next week on Tuesday night in New Hampshire. What impact will the results of the voters in these relatively small states have on the probabilities that various candidates will in fact win their party's nomination. Let's take a look at history. We've got some examples where Iowa and New Hampshire made a big difference, and then some other examples where the results of Iowa and New Hampshire may have made a short-term difference, but in the long term didn't seem to affect the front runner much at all. Let's look first at 04, famous case, Howard Dean, former governor of Vermont, was leading the Democratic national polls. Then came Iowa, he lost, he screamed. Then came New Hampshire and he lost. And look what the difference was. Going into Iowa and New Hampshire, Dean was leading 25 to 9 over John Kerry. After Kerry won in those two states, the dust settled and it was Dean down to 13, Kerry all the way up to 47. And of course, Kerry went on to get the Democratic nomination. Let's go back to 1996. On the Republican side of the ledger, Bob Dole, Senator from Kansas, was leading in the national trial heats for the Republican nomination. Then Pat Buchanan won in New Hampshire. The dust settled and, well, Buchanan gained some. He went from seven pre-New Hampshire to 25% of the national polls after New Hampshire, but Bob Dole managed to hold on to his lead. It dropped a few points, but he was still ahead of Buchanan after New Hampshire. And of course, Dole went on to get the Republican nomination. Let's go back to 1980, another example where primary results didn't make a huge difference. Ronald Reagan was leading over George Bush Sr. significantly before Iowa. Bush won narrowly in Iowa and caught up with Reagan. The two were tied after Iowa, but the primaries continued. Ronald Reagan moved out ahead, and of course, Reagan got the nomination in 80 and went on to win the presidency. And let's go back to 1976. Jimmy Carter, an obscure governor from Georgia, was at only 4% in our Gallup national polling prior to Iowa and New Hampshire. Carter won both of those, the dust settled, and he was all the way up to 26% and, of course, went on to win his party's nomination. Bottom line out of all of this, the results of Iowa and New Hampshire sometimes make a big difference and sometimes they don't. That's what's going to make this so fascinating as we follow the impact of Iowa and New Hampshire on the voting intentions of Republicans and Democrats nationwide. I'm Dr. Frank Newport, Editor-in-Chief of the Gallup Poll.